the government is, depending on the figure, probably going to come knock on your door and say, hi, we want to talk to you about this. We are the Armed Attorneys. Today, we're talking about a handful of videos that have gone viral recently, and it relates to FBI agents knocking on the door saying, open up. We're going to be talking about when they can come and start chatting you up. Uh, what, if anything, do they have to identify themselves and some best practices in dealing with them when they're at your door? But before we begin, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button and check us out at walkertaylorlaw.com, full service criminal defense firm. And I think it bears... Uh, this all kind of centers around some social media posts, and the government has been doing some controversial things when it comes to that. Yeah, so what we see are um, FBI agents, although I do see a lot of people who are like, plain clothes FBI. Like, what's a uniform FBI agent? Mm, They're wearing their little jacket. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so FBI agents, they look they look like anyone. They look like the rest of us, right? So In our region, FBI agents wear Hawaiian shirts, yeah. and you can't tell that they're FBI agents. No. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to play some video. Can we just move in front of the house so the dogs don't go crazy? Sure we can, yeah. I need you to identify yourself and let me take imagery of your IDs. I'm not going to share my credentials on the phone. Um, so you said you were with the FBI? That's correct. And why won't you show me your credentials? We did. I, I, showed you my credentials. I didn't let, take a look at them. I said, one second, I'll be right back. Are you going to show me your credentials or no? Yeah, we did already. So, and we identified ourselves. So what we'd like to do... I didn't look at your credentials with... again. Well, I we... didn't verify them. I, w I told you to wait and I went inside. Okay, that's correct. What we'd like to do is just have a conversation with you about some social media posts that you've made. Would you be willing to talk to us today about that? No, I would not. I would like you to later talk on with my lawyer. Okay. Do you have identification, you have card cards? No, to? no. I'll get back to you. Do you mind having your attorney uh, contact the FBI office in Oklahoma City? What's the number? What are the names of the agents? I'll Google it for you. So you're refusing to identify yourselves? No, we've already identified ourselves. Again, I did not take a look. Okay, so the phone number for the FBI in Oklahoma City is 405-290-7770. Okay. If you just call me for the and tell him that Facebook flagged me for posts. Uh, Facebook gave us a couple of screenshots of, of your accounts. Okay. So we no longer live in a free country and we can't say oh, yeah. what we want? No, we totally do. That, that's why we're not here to arrest you or anything like that. We well, you can't arrest me for freedom of speech. That's we live in America. Yes, correct. Exactly. So it's kind of weird that you want to come talk to me about me exercising my freedom of speech. We do this every day, all day long, talk to people. Okay. It's just an effort to keep everybody safe, make sure that nobody has any ill will or bad intent or anything like that. And we've got no reason to believe necessarily that that's you, and that's why we just wanted to have a conversation. So do you have a conversation with everybody on the neighborhood? Uh, do you have information with anybody else in the neighborhood? I mean, all I've done is exercise my right oh, no, as an American to citizen to on a public social media platform with my personal opinions, correct? Okay, Mo most of the individuals, right, in America, especially older generation, right, have Facebook. Are you questioning all the citizens in America? We, we certainly would if we had any, any sort of concerns. Okay, so you have concerns about my personal opinions? If you don't want to talk to us, then you can... I'm definitely not going to have a talk with you. Well, thank you for your time this morning, and feel free to reach out. Okay, they're so-called FBI. This is Rola Abdel Jawad in Stillwater, Oklahoma. This is America. So, I mean, yes, they look like they, you know, very casually dressed, knock, 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 FBI. 
And I mean, I guess question number one is a free speech question. We start there. Yeah, because we've had some and for example, we just had a case argued mm-hmm. in the United States Supreme Court. This was Missouri and Louisiana. Their attorneys general suing the the federal government basically because they were putting their thumb on the scale when it came to censorship. This related specifically to um, certain vaccines and certain pandemics that YouTube has very strange rules about. So I'm not going to utter any of those, mm-hmm. but essentially saying, hey, look, we have a First Amendment right to be to engage in free speech. And the federal government is effectively violating our First Amendment rights by directing these agent, you know, these different, you know, it's Facebook, it's uh, Instagram, it's these other folks telling them what speech to take down. Right. And so that's actually been argued before the Supreme Court. Now we are awaiting a decision because, of course, when we talk about First Amendment rights, and this is something that people get confused more often than you would think, um, which is like. If Richard says something I don't like, and I'm like, shut up, Richard, I'm going to, I don't know, do something terrible to you to curtail your First Amendment rights, right? Sure. Okay, I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to do whatever I want. I'm not the government. The First Amendment restrains the government, right? So, I mean, we can all, like, you know, punish each other ad nauseum for exercising free speech. It does not invoke the Looking at you, comment section. I know, right? I know people think that we hide their comments or that we delete comments, by the way. We do not. Um, we are, in fact, although not the government, we are First Amendment absolutists here. Um, but YouTube hides your comments. So take it up with YouTube. Yeah. But- uh, okay. Anyway, so um, so we don't know what's going to happen, but the, but the First Amendment constrains the government. So that question in that case is how much can the government restrain your speech in the way of these sweeping pressures on social media companies to take down what they consider misinformation. Um, And here we have a different method by which the government may be suppressing your speech. So this is directly a First Amendment issue. If you are posting things on social media the government doesn't like, are they allowed to come intimidate you and investigate you and curtail your rights? And the answer in this instance is maybe. We don't know what this woman posted in particular or these other people, right? Yeah, and so we look at the different levels of encounters that we have with, think about the government, the state, you know, federal agents, people acting on their behalf, and we have different levels of encounter. What we see in this video is what we call a voluntary encounter. So law enforcement is allowed to, any place they're physically allowed to be present, think about out in public, um, start chatting people up, talk mm-hmm. about the weather. They can talk about whatever they want with you mm-hmm. and they don't need to have a warrant. They don't need to have even reasonable sp- suspicion that you've committed a crime. They can just start chatting yeah. you up. You can answer their questions. It's all voluntary. Yeah. But we have, um, you know, a, an encounter here that would, um, it is a voluntary encounter, but it's not just about the weather. There is clearly some sort of investigation happening. So we are looking at, probably an investigation into the exceptions to the First Amendment, assuming they're not being entirely 100% abusive here, which under certain administrations is certainly possible. But, um, you know, we're looking at, right, First Amendment exceptions, things like incitement of imminent lawlessness, right? Um, We're talking about true threats. We're talking about fighting words. We're talking about harassment. We're talking about child pornography. There are just certain things that are not protected by the First Amendment that the government can, in fact, come after you for. So, for example, if you make a very overt threat to murder a very high-profile political figure and you post that on your Facebook, the government is, depending on the figure, probably going to come knock on your door and say, hi, we want to talk to you about this. That is what we would call a true threat, perhaps. And they're going to figure out how serious you are and they're going to investigate you. Yeah, but that kind of raises a question that we saw come from this video of, do these folks have to identify themselves? Mm-hmm. And the short answer is no. I no. mean, there's, there's no legal obligation for law enforcement to identify themselves. You know, it might be prudent. It might be a standard course for them to identify themselves. Uh, but we see all these kind of like, oh, if you're a cop, you got to tell me. You know, there, it's a little bit of that plus... There's really no um, enforcement mechanism or remedy if they fail to identify themselves. So Right. Um, and, and, you know, there are exceptions to that, right? If you're being arrested, the FBI has to present their IDs. Yep. Um, if they are responding to civil unrest, that law got passed in 2021. They actually yep. have to wear visible badges. But just generally speaking, and again, it's going to be FBI policy normally to tell you who they are. 
probably show you a badge. Tell, tell you, you to call the field office to verify their to ver identity. Exactly. But, you know, you see this woman who, like, hey, I saw your badge for a second. Show me again. And they're like, nah, just call. I mean, I think they can do that. Yeah, and they're definitely not going to let you photograph their badges. Um, mm -hmm. Again, not required to show you. And they're not going to let you photograph their badges. So, no. But I think what's kind of interesting here is how do we then, all right, knowing that they can just come knock on your door, chat you up, not necessarily have to identify themselves, how should you kind of handle yourself? I don't think this lady does a very good job. She starts out okay. She starts out okay. She starts out pretty strong which is asking for the identification. You should absolutely ask yep. every time. You should um, collect all the information that you can and then tell them, my attorney will be in contact with you. She yeah. does that part great. See, if she would have stopped right there because mm -hmm. they said, hey, we want to talk to you about your social media posts. Are you going to chat with us? She says, no, you can speak to my attorney. If she would have stopped right there, gone back inside into transaction, that I would have given that an A+. plus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, certainly. But she doesn't. She doesn't. Yeah, the the things that and and this is how you know the people get information weaselled out of you. Um, she tacitly admits to she posting admits to a, posting. Yeah, she admits to posting, and so and she knows she knows what they're there about, right? She's like, well, my opinions, you know, and it's like, uh, uh, as as a, as an attorney, that's the kind of stuff that makes me right. And it makes me uncomfortable because it's like. Let's say she did. Let's say she did do something that is not protected by the first amendment. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Let's say she did. But she 100% just corro corroborated whatever yeah. that was. Admitted that she was in fact the one posting. It wasn't someone doing it under her account or some someone who had hacked her or what have you. And, you know, I mean there's just the just the general consciousness of guilt there. I don't know. I I will admit I do not know how widespread this FBI activity is. If they are going after people for legitimate exemptions to protected free speech, or if this Just is- Just hilarious memes. A hilarious meme and a campaign of harassment. Um, I, I Truly, I don't know because we haven't seen any prosecutions come out. So the only thing we can look at is internet fodder, which is going to be one-sided because it's mostly posted by the guy who's in trouble, right? Yeah. So we just don't know, but so, it's something interesting to watch. Advising them that you'll communicate to them through an attorney. Maybe they give you their information. Maybe they don't give you your, their information. But then stopping the conversation and yes. not continuing on because little things can be used to corroborate what might be criminal activity. And so you don't want to subject yourself, uh, open yourself up to kind of corroborating that, proving that somebody posted something on a computer. It's kind of difficult legally. I mean, that's a, a difficult thing to do. But when you admit to it, well, you've just removed all these hurdles that the government has to jump through, potentially, to mm -hmm. prove up that conduct, and oh, you've, you've made, made their the, job a lot easier. made the warrant process easier. You've made prosecution easier. You've yep. done a lot. And another question that kind of comes up under these situations are, oh, they didn't read her, her rights. They didn't Mirandize her before they tried to talk to her. And I think this is just one of those myths that needs to die. You know, the only time that Miranda is invoked is if you are in custody and being custodially interrogated. So if one of those two things are missing, they don't need to Mirandize you. Uh, they don't need to read you your rights. They can just ask you questions. You mm -hmm. know? So think about if one of these two parts of the equation are missing. Let's say you're in custody, you're in cuffs in the back of a car, but they're not talking to you. Well, if you just start talking, all of that stuff is admissible in court mm -hmm. or change it up a little bit. Let's say you're um, not in custody. You're standing at your front door like this lady was in this video and they're asking you questions, well, maybe that counts as interrogation, but you're not in custody. All of that material is going to be admissible in court. So um, they don't necessarily need to read you your rights. Yeah. And it's kind of tricky to determine whether something is admissible in court or not. Right. The answer is almost never Miranda, by the way. Just the way police have now structured their investigations in lieu of the Miranda decision, perhaps, Miranda is almost never the answer. I mean, I, oh, I have very rarely seen statements Evidence get thrown, thrown out. out. Yeah, over Miranda. Exactly right. And think about this. Whenever you're not Mirandized, it doesn't keep you from getting arrested. It doesn't mm -mm. keep you from getting charged with a crime. Mm -mm. It only has a limited effect of it affecting the admissibility of certain statements at trial. So it's a pretty narrowly tailored kind of, I don't know, remedy for a violation. So um, it's not at all encompassing. It's not a silver bullet and you can't rely on it. But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. And exercise your First Amendment right in the comment section. Let us know. Do you think this lady handled it perfectly? Do you think she did mess up a little bit? Until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys. 
and some bre- breast practices. <laughs> Let me redo all of that. 